And there we go. Perfect. This meeting is being recorded. This week we just started the Parsha of Teruma, which um, we we don't we always talk about the previous week's Parsha, but I'm just giving a um, just just uh, opening. So Teruma is where we have the commandments from Hashem to, to Moses to give over to the Jewish people about the donations that they should be giving to the tabernacle, to the Mishkan, and the building of the tabernacle. Next week we're going to talk about the garments of the priests, the Kohanim, the high priest and the priests. This week is about the various um, the various furniture vessels that were to be put in the tabernacle and, and the building of the actual tabernacle, the pillars, the, the, the curtains, etc. And this was all, and um, this is a continuation of the last week, which was Mishpatim, which was all a lot of um, laws of uh, justice, uh, laws which um, which are all what Moses heard from God when he went up to the mountain. So, so we had the parsha of Yisro, which was the giving of the Torah, and then we had the parsha of Mishpatim, which was the laws that Moses heard when he was up there, and then a continuation, which was the commandments on how to build, on how the the, the temple should be built, the tabernacle. Now, although the main narrative of Matan Torah, giving of the Torah, was in the portion that we spoke about last week, the portion of Yisro. What did we talk about last week? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. I am going blank. What was last week's topic? Did we speak about the giving of the Torah last week? I think we did. Yeah. Yeah, we spoke about them coming to Mount to the desert of Sinai to get the Torah. Um, the main narrative is in the parsha of Yisro, which we spoke about last week. But there's a continuation at the end of of the, the parsha that we're talking about now, Mishpatim, which was actually last week's parsha. After it talks about all the different mitzvahs, all the different laws, the Torah goes back to tell us more about the giving of the Torah. We're talking about chapter. 24, Perak Haftalad in the book of Shemot. You can open up if you have a Chumash in front of you. It will be quite helpful if you do. Today is um, today is going to be a little bit inside, more inside than usual. So, and we're not, we're not going to talk about the first part of the chapter, which is all of the Jews telling God that they're going to listen and do what God says. And then the various sacrifices that were offered and the blood that was sprinkled on them before they got the, before the, the giving, before the Torah was given, to prepare for the giving of the Torah. Actually, there's a whole explanation. Why is, why is, the two diff- why is this spoken about in two different places? Why, why didn't this all belong earlier in the parish of Yisra? And that's because it's talking about a different aspect of the giving of the Torah. It's talking more about the, the deeper covenant with the Jewish people, not just the, Torah, the actual Torah being given, the book of laws, but a deeper covenant and um, deeper bond between God and the Jewish people, which was formed at the time of the giving of the Torah. If we look at the last few verses, so verse 12, Moses and Joshua, his, his, um, Joshua, his, his attendant, his servant, um, they got up and they started heading towards the Mount Har Elohim, the, mount, the mountain of God, which is Mount Sinai. That's 13. That's, thir- that's 13. Okay. Is that, I think I said 13, yeah. You said 12 and I was just looking at the wrong place. Yeah, yeah, you're right, 13, I'm sorry. You're God right. told them to come and at 13 they came. And they told, in, in, in verse 14, they told the rest of the elders, the rest of the Zikanim, who were the, who were the elite, elitist of the, of the Jewish people, they should wait. They shouldn't go any further. They should stay where they are. They shouldn't go up on the mountain. And that Aaron will be with them. And Chor, who was Moses' nephew, the son of Miriam. And um, if anybody has a, has something that they need to deal, need to figure out, they should go. They should go speak to Aaron and Chor, because Moses is going to be gone for a while. And Moses goes up, verse fifteen. 
Moses goes up the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain. And then in the next verse, in verse 16, the Torah goes back into the Torah goes back into um, giving more details regarding this Moses going up on the mountain. That on the seventh day, what seventh day? It was unclear what we mean when we say seventh day. There's actually different opinions, but we're going we're to go according to one opinion to keep things simple. The seventh day after the Torah was given. So seven days later, they had already got the Torah, which we spoke about earlier, that Moses already went up to the mountain. On the seventh day, Hashem called to Moses from the mountain, from the cloud, from the cloud. So Hashem's the honor of Hashem, the glory of God, rest of the Mount Sinai, the cloud covered covered it for six days, and on the seventh day, God called Moses from the cloud. So this is the first seven days of the forty day period that Moses would be on the mountain. Moses was already on the mountain to a certain degree; he'd already gone up part of the mountain, and now God is calling to him seven days later. And saying to him, calling him to come, to come closer. Then the verse goes in, t- in verse 17 and says as follows. It goes back into describing the glory of God that rested on the mountain. What does it mean that the glory of God rested on the mountain? Omar e kavod Hashem. The appearance of the glory of God was like a consuming fire on the mountaintop it, to the eye, in the eyes of the Jewish people. So that's how it seemed to the Jewish people. They saw this fire consuming the mountain, which was the glory of God, which was resting on the mountain. And then the verse goes back in 18, back to what we said before. It repeats a second time that Moses came into the cloud and he went up on the mountain, and Moses was there for 40 days and for 40 nights. Altogether, including the first six days, he was already part, partially up the mountain. So he was there altogether for 40 days and 40 nights. Why does the Torah repeat that Moses went into the cloud? It seems to be a repetition. We said already in verse 15 that Moses went up the mountain and there was a cloud covering it. So Moses went up through into the cloud. Then God calls him and he comes again. So what is happening over here? What is so so we said we I just explained, I said it was part way through the mountain. It wasn't fully up the mountain. But what but how what, how do we how do we know that? It seems to be it's the same trip that is being repeated two times. Moses ascended the mountain, and again, God calls Moses, and Moses ascends the mountain again going through the cloud a second time. That's what it seems like. I, I, I didn't see it, read it that way. How do you read it? I just read it that, that he goes up to the mountain and then it says, and that there was this cloud covering the mountain and then it mm-hmm. describes where God is and that the cloud covered the mountain for six days. Um, and then he called to Moses from the cloud on the seventh day. Um, and only in the last verse, it says that Moses went into the cloud. To me, it felt more like a preparation. This is what's happening. We've got this amazing thing going on there. It looks like there's a fire, but it's not really a fire. It's just the way it looks. That's what God looks like. Uh, that actually, I, I missed that part until you said that it just looks like that. No, I say it doesn't say clearly. It was only that it looked like that. I mean, that's we're, right. we're judging from their appearance. We're judging. We're not saying that it wasn't there. We're just saying from the the way the Jewish people saw it, that's what it was. We're not saying that it doesn't mean it wasn't that. It just means that it wasn't necessarily that. Right. I always read it as if there was a fire at the top of the mountain when you said Marek the Dunai. I said, oh doesn't mean that it was fire. It means that that's what they saw. But anyway, I don't know. To me, it, it sounded like the whole thing is a setup. And then at the end, 
Moses comes in. It's like, okay, guys, this is how it's all going to be. Really dramatic and all that. And then Moses walks into the cloud. Yeah, the Torah, the Torah was given already at the beginning of it. That's the problem. The Torah yeah, was given right. on the first day. So right. the Torah was given. What was ha- Why was Moses when the Torah was given? What? Where was Moses? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It seems, especially if we look at last, last week's parsha, that Moses went up the mountain to get the Torah. Yeah, so that's, I guess I, I always wondered about that. Is this that he, I mean, he went to get the tablets, but the, the Torah, I mean, God speaking, he spoke to everybody. Right. Yes, exactly. But God also spoke to Moses. There was Moses going up and back and down, up and down, up and down. So Moses, so first God spoke to the, everyone separate, and by everyone themselves. And mm-hmm. then they said, it's too much for us. We couldn't handle it, right? That's what we spoke about in, uh, in Yisra. So then Moses said, then they said, Moses, you do it for us. You go and talk to God. You be the one to tell us. So then Moses goes up up mm-hmm. to the mountain, into the cloud, talks to God, comes down, tells him, tells him what happened. Mm-hmm. Tells him about the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. Oh, he tells them about the Ten Commandments? Yeah, Moses was the, was the, was the, um, was the, um, the narrator. He was the one to give it over. So, oh, I see. interestingly, we're talking about a cloud over here. This cloud is not the first time we're talking about the cloud. This cloud on the mountain that we've been speaking about earlier. And then in the last verse, the Torah t- talks about a cloud a second time. No, I hear, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. And I, I'm, not, I'm not fully. It's, 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 it's a hard piece that I'm trying to figure out myself. Um, but I, Rashi okay, says, so, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring what we're saying what Rashi says. I, I, don't fully, I don't fully get it. But I want to say what, what, what Rashi says. This brings out some more, more in, the whole, in the whole story. But I just want to ask you first, so are you saying that not everybody heard God talking to them? So it was only... Everyone heard God talking to them, but they only heard the first two official, there's different, different explanations, but they didn't hear everything. They heard the first two commandments and then they, and then they passed out. Oh. So then they were re- re- reawakened. I'm pretty sure this is written in the Torah. And they were reawakened, not over here, in different area parts. So right. based on Deuteronomy also and other places, Devarim. So so then then Moses gave over the rest to the Jewish people. They said they said we want to talk they, they said they said um they said we want to talk, we want we want to remain alive. We don't want to pass out to receive the Torah. Yeah. David? Well, I think I recall somewhere, and I'm not a hundred percent sure, that when Hashem first spoke, he gave all of it at once. And then yeah, he so that, that. That's, it says that also. That's why I was saying there's different ways of understanding it. But. So, so you could say that everybody heard all of it. It was transmitted mm-hmm. to everybody. But then to learn it, and it had to get spread out, they could only tolerate a little bit from Hashem. So they ended up asking for Moses to be their intermediary. Yeah, that's another way to say it. To, to, in, basically, in order to, in order to really, to really um, make a bond with it, in order to become one with it, not just to hear it and pass out, which isn't really... It's not actually um, permeating them. It's not actually in a way of dot. It's not in a way of fully resonating and connecting because they, they weren't able to handle it. So then Moses was basically the one that was able to bring it down on a level that they were able to handle. Yeah, and I, I would even uh, give a little more precision to that in a sense. When they get it all, they absorb it, but they don't consciously absorb it. So they've gotten a transmission and it's in them. Mm-hmm. But in order to understand it in Bina at that level, they need it in a different way. Okay. I, I think I have to just reread this. Yeah. I'm just looking at Ditro again right before the before that section of the Sarat of Dibrot, and yeah, there is a whole thing about it. Okay. Anyway, I think another I, I complication. Want that, that topic. Never mind. There's another complication because different people argue about what order the Torah is written in and that it didn't come in sequence. So some of this gets confusing because you don't know what happened before what. 
unless exactly. you go into the detail of the Everyone different- Everyone agrees. There's, there's, no, there's no opinion from the traditional explanation of the Torah that it's not in order. There's no, that it's in order. Nobody thinks it's in order. So it, it's certainly not in order because we have, we, we have things mixed around all over the place. Um, yeah, so this, this is clearly that what's spoken about at the end of Mishpatim is clearly connected with what happened in the Yitra. It's the same Torah that was given. It wasn't a different one. And it was same, you know, it goes through the whole, the whole, um, goes through the whole story again. Um, but in between, we had other laws. We had other parts. We had the story of the war of, of, Am- of Amalek and other things which came up in between. Not Amalek. We had the story of, um, of the, uh, was it the, 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 the birds or the, or the water, something in the end of last week's portion. So things keep on getting mixed around. That's for sure. But the, I just want to that, 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 look at next and the logic of it. There's different opinions, so it's really the logic of different opinions. Yes, right. So it's hard to just read the written Torah and kind of understand because you need to kind of understand all the nuances. You can't just read the written Torah and understand. It doesn't if you just read the written Torah, you won't understand it. Okay, so what you can't, you say? before we get to Rashi. Look at look, look at this verse first. Um, I know I was going to say Rashi, but I want to bring this first because I think it's, I think it helps give context. In verse seventeen, Yud Zion, we go back to describing the glory of God. So we just said at the beginning of verse sixteen that the glory of God rested on Mount Sinai, with the cloud covering the mountains for six days. Right. Then we go and we say. God called Moses. After we said it was the glory of God, God, cl- God called Moses from the glory. Moses heard his, his name being called to come up the mountain, come up higher in the mountain. <laughs> then we go back to describing the glory of God, that the glory of God looked like a consuming fire. Mm-hmm. Why, don't, why don't we take those few words that God called Moses and put them after the description of the glory? Do you understand my question? No. Chapter six, verse sixteen. The God's presence, God's glory rested on Mount Sinai. Mm-hmm. The cloud covered it for six days. Mm-hmm. What makes sense now is to jump to the chat to the next verse, seventeen. What was the glory? How did it look? It looked like a consuming fire. Then, after we've given, we've explained what we're talking about. Then tell me, God called Moses, and the God called Moses on the seventh day from the cloud. And Moses listened, and he went up in verse eighteen. Why is the Torah putting me this? It's what eighteen? What's the before that? Verse seventeen. Seventeen. Seemingly what? launched it 13, in the middle 17? of verse sixteen. I, I'm not with you. Is it 13, 17? Is it 12, 17? 24, 24. We, we, we were all on the same. I think we were we were all there before. No? Chapter 24. Yeah. Sorry, okay. David. I, I sent an email. You kept moving around, so I wasn't, I didn't catch you. No, I've been in this chapter the whole time. Okay. No one's moving around. <laughs> so what's going on? So what are you asking? Why is it what? I'm not, I, I'm bring, bringing out a point. It's, it's a question that sticks out right away is that, that verse 17 is in the wrong place. Oh. If we're describing God's presence on the mountain, that description belongs before we tell us we tell you about God calling Moses, right? Because we say the glory, huh? Why? Because first, it's it's like jumping back and forth. God's glory rested on Mount Sinai. God called Moses. The glory looked like this. Moses listened. Why don't we put Moses listened after God called him and put the glory of the description of the glory after we talk about the glory of God, right? Make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. You have a better explanation? No, I think that's how the Bible is written. That's all. It's like, it's just poetry. So it's all- It is, but it's not just poetry. It's poet. Some parts of the poetry. There are parts of the Bible which are clearly poetry. Azino is poetry. Az Yasha, the, story, the song that the Jewish people sang was poetry. This is not poetry. This is a story. Yeah, it's a story, but the word, the language is very poetic. It's okay. Unless we, unless we okay. say that it's bringing out something else. Rashi says something, brings it from the Talmud. So okay. say Rashi, good Rashi from the Talmud. He says, I mean, Rashi's, Rashi's good enough for me anyways, but, but I'm, yeah. Verse 18, he says, Moses came in the cloud. This cloud 
was smoke, like smoke. Kamin ashanhu. It was like smoke. Mm -hmm. Clouds are usually not smoke. Clouds are usually um, vapor, mm -hmm. um, water, um, right? Well, they're both, they, they have both of them happening here. There's the regular cloud. One second. No, this cloud, the cloud in verse 18, he's talking about. That is smoke. This is smoke. This is not the regular cloud. This no, is not the cloud. This, of the this is the smoke. This is the consuming from the consuming fire that's yes that's exactly. eating on the on the mountain the rocks and the yes the stones and the dirt one second yes this is the consuming fire. that what do we say this was smoke what happened there was a consuming fire over there Esho Chalet, a fire that was consuming the mountain this was the smoke from the fire mm -hmm. this was not the cloud of 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 um moisture that was of God's glory, which had been there all the way, which had been leading the Jewish people in the desert and, and across the, from the Egyptians and everything else. This is a different cloud. This is a smoke cloud. Right. The, 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 the vapor cloud is really more ephemeral than this. The smoke cloud uh, is full of heavy particles and soot. It's not exactly. Ephemeral. So Rashi adds something which is, which is like, wow, how, how, you know, Rashi says, Moses didn't walk that, what, 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 he said that, that God made a pathway for Moses to walk through this cloud of smoke. Mm -hmm. Moses didn't walk through the smoke, through the actual smoke. Through the, what was the word before that you said before, Robin, of, to describe what the, 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 um, the charcoal, the, 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 the um, it's, it's, uh, they're heavy, coarse, coarse pieces. Absurd. Yeah, so he didn't walk through those. He walked, he, he headed towards it, but God made an opening that he shouldn't have to actually um come face, shouldn't have actually touch <laughs> the smoke of, of 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 from the from the fire. It's almost like uh, the sea of reeds, you know, right? He walked yeah. he walked through it unscathed and clean. He remained clean. Right. Mm -hmm. We said before, you said, you know, I said, I had said that it looked like it to the Jewish people that it was smoke. No, it was, this was, this was, this was a consuming, that it looked like a consuming fire. Yes, this was, this was not just, it didn't just look like a consuming fire. It was a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, of God's fire doesn't have to be consuming. Not all, fire, the, the way we know fire is that fire is consuming. But God's fire doesn't have to be consuming. If we look back at the story of the burning bush. The burning bush. You look back at the story of the burning bush, we find that the that the tree wasn't burning, right? Well, it just looks like that. The inenu kal. Inenu, no, it doesn't look like it wasn't burning. The tree was still there. Right. It, that's what I'm saying. The inenu yeah. kal. Yeah. 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 The fire. The fire wasn't consuming. So right. God's fire doesn't have to be consuming. Now, I just want to mention. You said before, Robin, that there was that the fire was 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 burning, was eating the rocks and the and the and the and the earth and the and the, the, and dirt. the um, dirt. Fire doesn't really burn rocks and dirt. Fire burns trees, twigs, wood. Yep. Fire doesn't burn stones and and mud properly. It, it, it certainly affects it. It maybe maybe it, it will dent it. It will it will, it will make it black. It will uh, you know it will it will do something to it. But fire doesn't actually properly burn it. Fire isn't able to be held onto it. The fire needs something to hold that to hold onto it. It's not usually rocks and and mud either. Right. It's not like fuel for fire. Right. In the, this is the, de the the desert. So in the desert, the, the 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 top of the mountain in the desert especially doesn't have trees on it. Top of the mountain is rocks and, and, and earth. So it wasn't fully smoke. Rashi says it was kamin ashan. It was like smoke. Because it was a smoke. It was a certain kind of smoke, but it wasn't fully smoke. Because this fire, jumping ahead, this fire wasn't fully, wasn't fully a natural fire. Meaning we're talking, everything over here is God's revelation. Fire, in general, doesn't come doesn't descend fire ascends fire goes up it doesn't come down here god's fire came down on the mountain 
And in addition to it coming down on the mountain, it was also consuming rocks and mud and earth, which is not typical for fire. So this was not a, this was not fully a natural fire. And, and the smoke wasn't fully a natural smoke either. It was like smoke. The previous Rebbe says an incredible thing, and I'm jumping to Chassidus, but this is, it brings out part of this. He says that there's two steps over there. You know, if you think of a body and a soul, how could a body and a soul come together? A soul of a person, a person, an animal, anything. A body is, is material, physical. A soul is spiritual. These two things don't come together. One is ascends, it's godly. One descends, one is, it goes down. One is great and gravitates to the ground. It, 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 it does, it gravitates to the ground. It doesn't, it's, 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 our bodies are earth, are whatever. They're not, they're not uh, spiritual. So how can they come together? He said, you need a second step. It's miraculous that they, that they work together. That's step number one. But in addition, in order for that to work, you need God's infinite power to make a living being, to allow the soul to be in the body. A baby is a miracle of God. When a person dies, one second, quiet mental whisper, please. Yeah. Second, my kids are home for President's Day. So exciting. When I'm in the middle of the class, I'm going to have 10 more minutes and then I'll be with you, okay? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, when the door slams the door, please come and sleeping. Where was I? A, a baby is a miracle of God. Person passes away. Time comes. Saul is gone. Saul is not in the body anymore. This is Hashem's infinite power allowing the soul and the body to work together, to come together, to, to be, to be, to be working together. So it, it's miraculous that they're working together. It, that they don't it doesn't make sense that spiritual and physical should work together. And it's miraculous that that happens in the that they're even able to meet, even able to join. So there's two steps. There's there's the there's the actual life. Life, every moment of life is a miracle. Not just because God is putting his infinite power into allow, allowing our soul and body to be together, but that the fact that they're actually working together. That something that ascends and something that descends work together. So in this case, just jumping back to the mountain, we've got two miracles over here. The fire comes down. Fire doesn't usually come down. The fire comes down into the material. Miracle number one. Miracle number two, that it actually affects the body. It affects the mountain. The mountain is burning, even though the mountain is not is is wood, is is stone and rocks and 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 dirt. So it's not it's not real smoke. It's like smoke. Everyone with us? Mm -hmm. Why is it that Moses needed a pathway to walk through the smoke? This is God's, Moses is going up to get the Torah from Hashem. Basic, basic decency is you come to God, you come to, we come to, we, we go to talk to the king, especially to get the Torah, the biggest gift that's ever going to be given to, to mankind to look decent. Moses is going to walk through a, a, a pillar of, he's going to walk through a bunch of smoke, black smoke is going to make him look dirty and, 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 and black. Yeah, I mean, if God told him to, then he would. But, you know, there's a, myth, there's a law that we have to wash our hands and face every day before we pray. And even if we're not going to pray, just to, because we resemble God, because we're created in the image of God, we have to be clean. Well, I did so know that. It says in the Talmud, the law is for the prayer, but in the Talmud it says that technically we should be washing ourselves every day because we should be in the image of Hashem. We're in the image of Hashem. We should look decent. We should Sounds be decent. Good to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... So here Moses is going to get the Torah from Hashem. He's going to be black. He's going to be dirty. So God made a pathway for him to walk through a pathway. Well, we know that he came down from the mountain all shiny. So couldn't be too bad. It's a good spot there. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> not what do you say that Deborah? It's a good spa up there. Yeah, well, I mean, not only did he get a, a pathway to walk <laughs> through the smoke, he also got sh- he also got shined. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, it's funny because if we I, it's, this is just I, I would get off topic last week last year it was I don't know if anyone if we if we recall we spoke about the I only I started learning this talk and I was like something similar we spoke about the the, the narrative of the Torah in in Parshas Yisra in the previous portion where it says over there that that, that the Mount Sinai was covered in smoke um was Ashan Kule it was fully it's with smoke because Hashem's fire came down on it Mm-hmm. It doesn't say like smoke. It says it was really smoke. It doesn't say a cloud. It says it's real smoke. Smoke come is where the smoke comes doesn't come from the fire itself. Smoke comes from the the consumption. The, whatever the fire is burning is eating away at. You can see from smoke how coarse the thing is that you're burning. No, we're not supposed to. If you take take a piece of polystyrene and you try to burn it. I mean that the, you do terrible. It's terrible for the energy. But you see how bad it is for the energy. You see the smoke. It's thick. It's thick, it's coarse. If you take, you know, you take a, a leaf and you burn it, you have a lot of smoke. So you can see that you can see how materialistic. You can see how thick, or how or how refined is the is the material that you're trying to burn through the smoke. The revelation of God of Mount Sinai that happened when, when God came, descended on Mount Sinai to give the Torah was the idea of what was happening over here is that we're bridging the gap between heaven and earth. God is coming down to the world, which means that all of the material is going to be exposed. Does it fit with God's light or does it not? And tech, really what's happening is, and this is what happens in our daily lives also, and in, in everything that we experience is that we have the bittle, we have that we have Hashem's light, which comes and and, and sometimes it, consu- it it consumes us. It it brings out in us a bittle, a humility, a connection to God in a very deep way. So sometimes we'll be overtaken by the by the fire of God, by the revelation of God, by the experience, the spiritual experience. That will be that our our material our materialism will, will be will be will be consu- consumed. It will be taken away, not taken away completely, but it will be consumed for the for the time being. This is what happened at the giving of the Torah. God comes down on Mount Sinai. The world was not refined. The world was very materialistic. It was separate from God. The revelation of God at Mount Sinai, which came down into the world, the world wasn't fully ready for it. It consumed the mountain. It didn't allow the mountain to remain. It, 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 it caused real smoke, thick smoke. But now we're talking about after the Torah was given. We're already six days later, seven days later. And here we have, here, it looks like a cloud. It doesn't look as coarse anymore. It doesn't look as as thick anymore. It doesn't look like it's so... Um, um, how do you say? Um, so so different than the revelations coming down on it. It looks like it's able to be consumed. It's more connected. Rashi comes along and he says that this is smoke. That even that tech that when you're serving Hashem and you're when we're serving Hashem in the daily lives, in order to receive the Torah, we we'll always have to go through smoke. We always have to burn. There always has to be a burning of ourselves, a certain bit or a certain letting go of ourselves. In order to be vessels to for Hashem, in order to receive the Torah, Hashem Hashem's purpose for us in the world is not that we should ascend up to the heaven without smoke. Just be spiritual. Hashem gave us the Torah down here to make a dwelling place for Him in this world, which means that we're going to have to do the work. We're going to have to burn sometimes, not burn as in destroy ourselves, but burn. One second, David. We're going to have to go through a certain refining in order to receive the Torah, in order to be fully vessels of the Torah. So when Moses had to get the Torah for the Jewish people, Moses had to go through the smoke, not just a cloud, to go through the smoke together. It has to be a consumption of the material, of the earth, of the, of the, of the, the thick earth on Mount Sinai. David. So when I listen to that, um, 
what it says to me is it's it's not just Bittal. So Bittal is emptying yourself, but it's actually like a, a step on the spiritual path of cleaning out some of our resistance, like burning off a layer of our klapat that keeps us from that level. So each time we do it, we're like at the edge of our um, being able to go to a higher level or, or clear out the blockages, um, the part of Egypt that we still have so that we can take in more. Yeah. The fact is that, that Hashem put us here in this world in a place where there is good and bad, in a place where we are always in touch with those clip out, those clip out. We always have, we always have layers. So however much spittle we're going to have and however much Hashem has, Hashem's light has refined us and we were overtaken, you know, some of the people can do a psychedelic, so they can do something which they'll be completely you know, lifted up and feel, you know, connected with God. But that doesn't mean that they're cleansed forever. Layers and layers and layers that need to be removed and need to be worked on and need to be dealt with. And those layers are not layers that were put here just to cause us difficulty and challenge. Those layers are part of Hashem's purpose. Hashem wanted there to be free choice. Hashem wanted us to work through the world, to work through everything that we were given. And sometimes that means fire. That means smoke. That means transformation, which can be difficult. It can be, it can dirty us. And I just want to say, you know, it, the, the, the way the rabbi learns the lesson over here, he says, you know, people could say, I'll, I'll deal with all of my layers, but but then there's the, then there's you know if we talk about the the, the different levels there's there's, there's 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 people there's animals there's different forms of life then you have growth you have things that grow so meach trees plants wood whatever and then you've got domem which was the rabbi which Hasidus is translated as the mineral mineral or it's like it's still rocks stones these these are things which are like they have no life it seems they have no life. So I'm going to go deal with that. I'm going to go deal with the parts of me which are which have no life. Those are too far for the, for the. Those are too too painful to touch upon. Those are too far to reach. We'll burn the the, the, the trees, the the growing stuff to become part of Hashem. Say no. Hashem's light wants to go there. It needs to go there also. In order to make a dwelling place for God, in order to receive the Torah, we have to bring God down even to that, those levels. And we might, you know, that means that we're gonna get dirty. We're gonna get we're gonna get black. We're gonna get there's gonna be smoke. There's gonna be thick smoke from trying to burn the rocks. Even though God's fire and when God's when God gives us God gives us the potential, it's we have the potential. We have the potential to burn the rocks. We have the abilities because God's fire is not natural. And most importantly, we are all Moses. Every Jewish soul is has a piece of Moses inside of them, and we compare it to the soul is called the Moses of us, the Bittel of us. The soul, when it comes to the soul, God is never God is always going to make an opening. We're never actually really going to get dirty. The soul is going to remain connected to Hashem. So even if we have to deal with those layers and we feel far and we feel separate, we feel burning and we feel smoke and we feel we're going to get black. Don't worry, the soul is going to have an opening. God is going to make open the path for Moses. He's not going to get black. And even the, the parts of us that seem like they are getting black, the, the, more, the parts which are not the soul, our, 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 our um, emotions and our, and our um, intellect and those parts of us, our desires, even them, the, the blackness is not, is not a contradiction to us. This is part of the work. This is part of the work to bring, this is really a, a step towards elevating and bringing out more holiness in the world. So it might seem like it's, we're black. It might seem like we're we're in the ch challenge. We're burning, trying to burn rocks. But ultimately, what does this bring to? It brings to this week's parsha, which is Hashem says right at the beginning of this week's parsha. After after we've spoken about the consuming fire, which burned rocks, which Moses had to walk through the cloud to get the Torah. The, the parsha begins in Truma. Also, Lee, make us for Shachanti. A few verses in, you should make for me a uh, you make for, make for me a temple and I'll dwell among you. That each one of us can make a temple for God inside of us. Each one of us can make a, a tabernacle for God inside of us to make a, a, a place of dwelling for Hashem because we've done that work. So only once we've really done that work are we able to be fully vessels in all of our beings to, 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 have, to have Hashem's presence inside of us and to really be united. Nice. 
Thank you. Of course. Yeah, thank you. See you Any next thoughts? Week. Anything? Bye. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for joining. Bye. Yeah, it's some great ideas to think about. Yeah, Bye, everyone. Thank you so Bye, much, everyone. Rabbi. Thank you so Bye. much, Rabbi, too. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Have a great week, everybody. All See the you best. next week. Bye. Bye now. Yeah. Yeah, see you next week, hopefully.